Our products, our people proudly on display. I'm Brian Moore and this is Focus NNS. We're here at Huntington Ingalls Industries headquarters in downtown Newport News. HII recently showcased their products and people at the Sea Air Space Show at National Harbor. We'll take you there. Plus, another milestone for the Virginia Class Submarine Program. And more than 36,000 combined years of service for our latest master shipbuilders. But first on deck, Huntington Ingalls Industries is front and center at the Sea Air Space Navy League Show. Aaron Pritchett with our communications division takes us there. It's all about who we are, what we do, and the opportunity to shine the spotlight on the hardworking shipbuilders who pour their heart and soul into building the most complex ships in the world. A message that's very important to get out and one that prominently takes center stage for Huntington Ingalls Industries year after year for the largest maritime industrial exposition in the country. Over the last three days here at the 2014 Sea Air Space Exposition in National Harbor, Maryland, Newport News Shipbuilding has been front and center, displaying, educating, and informing the thousands in attendance about everything from cutting edge technology to submarines and aircraft carriers. Sea Air Space is a trade show that uh, is put on annually by the Navy League. This symposium gives a chance for folks to talk, one, about the sea services and what they do, but it also gives organizations like ourselves a chance to show what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, what we build and uh, what we sell to the uh, Navy. We each build modules on the ship. We build it in four super modules. We've been a part of the Navy League annual Sea Air Space uh, Symposium for at least the last 10 years. These type of events are great events because they attract so many people. 11,000 or so folks come in here. And quite frankly, because it's based in D.C., it gives us as a company the greatest exposure across the board to congressional folks, and to our primary customers. We, we exclusively do produce, build all the bow, sail, all the stern. Oh, you know, sea, air, and space is, is a wonderful opportunity. I'll tell you, it's a developmental opportunity. Uh, this is probably my fifth year uh, being a part of the event. It's great. Uh, you know, it allows me to take what I've learned in the submarine program, you know, day to day, and, and bring that to the customer and more broad community. The more capabilities that we show, uh, the better chance we have to, one, keep our customers' interest, but two, uh, as we look at the future, be able to sell those products, uh, keep those products going, uh, and as we encounter other companies here, find out ideas that uh, they have that uh, perhaps we can use or that we can uh, work with them on in terms of providing better products to our customers. Uh, we've been doing augmented reality development at Newport News since February of 2011. It's basically the application of digital information onto our real world experience. It's something most people have never experienced before. Let me show you the, uh, the most fun, or the one I like the best. Okay. It's your, uh, your x-ray vision feature. So I want to know what's on the other side of this bulkhead. Where are there pipes? Where is there electrical? And I can use this product model to give me that information that I can normally not even see. We can use augmented reality for new construction, which is a great use case. But beyond that, if I want to eliminate drawings, I have to use it beyond just new construction. We want to use it for operation. We want to use it for maintenance. And we want to use it for overall. All parts of our business, all parts of our product can benefit from this technology. It's developmental technology. We haven't deployed it to scale. But for us, after three years, it's about time to, uh, to plant the flag and to show our customer and the community at large that when you think of high technology and thought leadership, you think of Huntington Ingalls and Newport News Shipbuilding. It is the hope that all those in attendance will gain a better understanding of all the complexities that are involved in building the world's greatest warships, and greater yet, all the capabilities that exist for the future. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Aaron. The business development team that works here out of the HII headquarters puts on the Navy League show every year. They do a fantastic job, and they're already planning ahead for next year. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. 36,880 years. That's the combined amount of service for this year's class of master shipbuilders. Shipbuilders who have served the company for 40 or more years earn that prestigious title. They were honored on April 24th during a special dinner at the Hampton Roads Convention Center for 868 master shipbuilders. It's an awesome feeling to be a master shipbuilder. I'm a second generation uh, 
shipbuilder. My father was in the fitters, uh, but I, I followed in his step. If he was here today, he'd be very proud of me. It's an awesome responsibility, and I really feel fantastic that I have been a part of this whole shipbuilding industry for this many years. I've enjoyed working in the shipyard. I have learned so much in my career, and I have met so many wonderful people, and I have learned a lot. I count it an honor to work for a company that is taking care of me for this amount of time. Uh, we do something that is uh, very important for our country, and uh, we take our jobs very serious. President Matt Mulherin addressed the master shipbuilders, telling them they have made history while shaping our future. You can see more of the ceremony on the Newport News Shipbuilding website, as well as a special advertising section on the WTKR-TV Channel 3 website. Every day, shipbuilders at Newport News reach above and beyond to deliver exceptional results. That is certainly the case in the refueling and complex overhaul program. As we know, it was a tough winter here. Cold, wet, and snowy weather caused some challenges with the installation of the radar tower of USS Abraham Lincoln, CVN-72. The project is an important part of the RCOH, so getting behind schedule is not an option. A collaborative spirit and determination from a team of highly skilled shipbuilders proved that weather was not going to stand in the way of completing this milestone. What well, awesome performance of teamwork there, and I don't know if you guys understand what we've accomplished, Due to interferences that were in our way, we basically overcame a 30-day deficit in the schedule. So we were 30 days behind schedule. We worked as a team to overcome those 30 days to end up three or four days ahead of schedule. So that's a major, major accomplishment. And I just want to say I appreciate all the hard work, long hours, and patience from all y'all. When you get involved in the job and and you can see the job progressing. I mean, it's going somewhere. It's not just standing still. And it gives you that motivation to stay there. You want to get it finished. You want to get it done. And we know there's a goal that we have to reach. So we, we go there and we work at it. You know, yeah, they long hours, we be tired, but it feels good when the finished product is over. It's game on for some middle school and high school students from the cities of Hampton and Newport News. They recently competed in the third annual Career Pathways Egg Drop Engineering Competition here at Newport News Shipbuilding, a unique event that challenges students to stay within budget while purchasing materials. It's all to design and construct a contraption that will protect an egg from a 12 and 18 foot drop without cracking. It's amazing, it's really exciting. Um, you get to see the, the students, their, the gears start turning in their heads, they get excited, they start thinking outside the box. We do incorporate the science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, the science portion comes from the physics, dropping the egg, taking in consideration the mass of the egg and the capsule and how, you know, say like a parachute, if it's going to prohibit it from dropping too fast or not fast enough. So it's just really, really amazing to see what the kids put together. All right, next up. The highlight of the event is putting each team's designs to the test. The eggs are dropped from a scissor lift right outside Building 520 in front of the Dorothy. This year's winning teams are from Booker T. Washington Middle School and Woodside High School in Newport News. The Navy has awarded an $18 billion contract to build 10 more Virginia-class submarines. The Block 4 award is the largest shipbuilding contract in U.S. Navy history in terms of total dollar value. Vice President of Submarines and Fleet Support Jim Hughes tells shipbuilders, quote, we continue to improve with each boat we deliver, and I'm very impressed with and proud of the entire VCS team and the new and innovative ideas being implemented every day, end quote. The multi-year block purchase contract continues the teaming arrangement between Newport News Shipbuilding and Electric Boat. It's a strategy intended to save money for the Navy and also secure the expertise of the industrial base. The Navy's 2014 30-year shipbuilding plan calls for the construction and delivery of Virginia-class submarines through at least 2043. And speaking of the Virginia-class submarine program, another milestone in the construction of John Warner, SSN 785. Jeremy Buston was at a special event to mark the occasion with the ship's namesake. I'm standing in the modular outfitting facility at Newport News Shipbuilding 
where submarine John Warner, SSN 785, has reached another major milestone. It was also the first chance for Senator Warner to see his submarine structurally complete and to thank the shipbuilders responsible for building his ship. It was a day of inspiration and excitement for Senator Warner, the United States Navy, and the shipbuilders at Newport News Shipbuilding. With pressure hall complete, delivery for the Virginia-class submarine is another step closer. It symbolizes how all of us have joined together to successfully build the most complex machine in the world for the best submarine force in the world. When you think about everything that has to be accomplished before we reach this point, the thousands of welds, the millions of components and valves, and the tons of material from across all 50 states, all of that has to precisely join together to create the most complex, lethal, and stealthy machine known to man. It's amazing to me, you know, that everyone gets to wake up every day and go to work to build nuclear power submarines, so I feel honored. Hundreds of shipbuilders lined the modular outfitting facility as Senator Warner thanked them for their hard work. So I want to pay tribute to all of you and thank you for what you've done. On this great ship, as your predecessors have done for years and years. With each Virginia-class submarine built, necessary advancements are made to keep our nation's Navy on the cutting edge and to maintain a strong military presence around the world. But we got to make it work. There is no alternative but to keep America strong militarily and economically. With pressure hall complete, John Warner's next big event is the christening later this summer. For Focus NNS, I'm Jeremy Buston. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS. Make sure you check out the latest news in our weekly publication, Currents, and in the latest edition of Yardlines. And if you have a story idea for Focus NNS, email us at focusnns at hii-nns.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.